Yes, hello to you all once again. Welcome back to your uh, number one and favourite classic dirt bike TV channel. And I hope you're continuing to enjoy my uh, video content with regards looking at all of these old school uh, vintage uh, racers. Now we have another uh, super rare British classic for you to take a look at now. And this uh, particular uh, machine, although uh, fully original, has just undergone uh, a recent uh, restoration. So let's dive straight into the video now and uh, take a look at Ian Ridley's lovely 1972 Clues Stroker. Now it's a well-known fact that uh, the great Alan Clues uh, originally uh, set up uh, Clues competition machines uh, back in 1973, although uh, the year uh, prior to that and before he'd even registered uh, the company name CCM with Companies House, uh, Alan uh, did manufacture a small run of around uh, just seven of these four-stroke racers that he called uh, Clues Strokers. And uh, the first ever customer to purchase one uh, was Cumbrian racer uh, Mike Barnes, who actually uh, went on to win uh, the local Scrambles Championship in 1972 while he was riding uh, one of Alan Clues's uh, strokers. So it was uh, suffice to say that it wasn't uh, too long before Alan sold his first batch of Clues strokers, which he actually built in his garage at the side of his house. And uh, with demand and now outstripping supply, it was then that he decided that uh, he may as well uh, turn uh, what was basically just a hobby uh, into a business venture. And the following year, he then registered his brand new business name, which would be called uh, Clues uh, Competition Machines. And so our uh, featured stroker here is uh, one of the last six bikes that Alan made. And uh, although this bike here has been fully restored, all of the parts that are fitted uh, onto it are exactly uh, the same components that were bolted onto the bike in 1972. But naturally, uh, these have all been uh, refurbished. So this quite rare and beautiful beast is currently owned and was restored by Ian Ridley. And this uh, signboard here gives you some of the information uh, of the bike's origins with regards uh, frame and engine numbers, etc. But as you can see, it was originally built in May of 1972 and currently it has a, a 608cc uh, BSA B50 engine. But uh, make no mistake, this is still a very rare bike, mainly uh, because it still has all of its original uh, 1972 parts. And because uh, there were so few of these bikes made, this example here of Ian's is a fantastic piece of Clues uh, racing history. But uh, as you know, when Alan Clues first bought over the failed uh, BSA competition department in 1971, he more or less just bought everything that they had uh, for sale, although uh, they still uh, wouldn't sell him any of the works engines. So Alan had to then basically just take a stock uh, BSA B50 or B44 uh, road bike engine and then uh, rework and retune it uh, for more power. But when Alan had finished uh, working his magic with these big four-stroke power plants, they were super competitive even against any of the big British uh, four-strokes of its day and they were also uh, quick enough to keep up and pass any of the bigger two-strokes. So to put uh, these bikes together, Alan uh, also managed to get his hands uh, on a few of the original uh, BSA works frames, which he used uh, as a chassis uh, for these new stroker bikes. But uh, these, of course, were in very limited supply and they soon uh, ran out. But uh, what Alan Clues actually did in his little garage to manufacture these first bikes was uh, quite amazing. And once uh, the word had been passed around the racing uh, paddocks of the day that Alan Clues was the guy to see if he wanted a quick uh, BSA-based scrambler. Uh, then uh, the demand for more of his fantastic strokers was certainly increasing. And in fact, uh, even 
Uh, so early on in Alan's bike building career, he was already uh, performing upgrades on this uh, BSA B44 and B50 barrels by uh, scalloping these cylinder barrels by uh, removing uh, some of the fins and uh, giving them a completely different look uh, from their original uh, 1960s uh, design. But to even uh, do machining like this in a small domestic garage was still a big deal uh, with the limited amount of uh, machine tools that Alan had at his disposal. And even these alloy hubs here had holes uh, machined into them just to try and help reduce the weight of the finished uh, bike. So it must have been a mammoth task to carry out uh, this kind of machining with very limited space and of course the basic of tools. But it's said that initially Alan it started off with just his own lathe and then uh, sometime later he bought another one from British trials rider uh, Arthur uh, Lampkin. But uh, besides these and a bench drill and uh, some other hand tools, that was about the total sum of the machine tools that Alan used uh, to make parts for these uh, Stroka race bikes. And of course, in those uh, early days, these BSA uh, works frames uh, still held the engine's uh, lubrication oil inside uh, the frame's front down tube. And it was filled uh, through that little filler plug that you can see there just in front of the bike's uh, fuel tank. But this oil storage system uh, would continue uh, when Alan began building chassis for his up and coming uh, CCM racers. And even although our uh, feature stroker here has been uh, restored and uh, all nicely blinged up, uh, this is still uh, more or less how your stroker uh, would have looked like if you'd knocked on Alan's garage door uh, back in 1972 and uh, had the £595 uh, wad of cash in your hand to cover uh, the purchase price. But uh, wouldn't it be great to be able to pay that kind of money now for one of these uh, very rare specimens, although uh, my guess is that uh, that original purchase price probably uh, wouldn't even cover uh, one of the wheels and the tyres on this uh, featured bike, but uh, the mind boggles to think uh, what such a gorgeous machine like this uh, would now be worth here in 2023. And uh, these outside paddock clips that I captured just recently of Ian Stroker it will give you a much better look at the fantastic lines of one of Alan Clues's early creations. Although for a very first ever venture into producing an off-road Scrambles 4 Stroker, Alan Clues certainly appeared to get every aspect of this bike spot on the first time out because this machine without doubt it had the looks and it also had a very good strong works uh, BSA uh, chassis and with those uh, reworked uh, B44 or B50 engines uh, to power them, uh, the seeds uh, were now sown for the many clues uh, competition models that were soon uh, to follow. Although without doubt this Ian Ridley owned bike is probably as good an example as you're ever going to find of one of these early uh, clues strokers because of the fact that very few of them uh, were actually made and even rusty old examples if you can actually find one uh, don't normally have uh, all of the 1972 uh, parts whereas uh, this featured bike is factory fresh with all of its original uh, clues components still bolted into their rightful place. But it was the early successes of building and then selling these strokers that actually led to the increase in demand for more machines and it was basically the catalyst for Alan Clues to up his production and then move to proper factory premises where he could manufacture more bikes at a much faster rate. And this Clues stroker model would then pave the way for what is still regarded as the very first official Clues competition race bike, which was the CCM that they produced in 1973. 
But apart from uh, the bike's frame and some of the other bits and pieces that came together to complete uh, these strokers, other parts were also sourced from outside suppliers because uh, this was a much more uh, cost-effective way uh, to produce the bikes rather than having uh, the financial costs of uh, tooling up uh, to manufacture these parts uh, themselves. So you can imagine that uh, Alan certainly had to keep his eye on the financial costs uh, when he was buying in uh, components from those uh, outside suppliers. But again, uh, our 1972 Clues bike has the proper old school type of handlebar still intact and uh, all of the other controls, including uh, the grips and the levers and the throttle gasser uh, and even the control cables are still all of the originals from when the bike uh, was brand new. But naturally, uh, all of these parts have undergone uh, some form of uh, restoration or re furbishment to bring them back uh, to life but uh, as I said it's uh, super rare to just see one of these uh, strokers with so many original parts uh, still uh, bolted onto it so it's certainly a fitting tribute to the work that Ian Ridley's uh, put into this uh, refurbishment uh, of this motorcycle and you'd be very hard pressed to find a better example anywhere uh, not only here in the UK but Europe and maybe even further a field. And even uh, some of the very small items uh, like this Champion spark plug suppressor cap, uh, these are parts that uh, were obsolete about 30 or 40 years ago so uh, heaven knows uh, where Ian actually managed to locate uh, this item but uh, then again this could quite easily still be the original part from 1972 because uh, these bikes did use uh, champion spark plugs and suppressor caps in uh, that year. But the attention uh, to detail on this bike is uh, simply uh, astonishing because, uh, as I mentioned, most of the bright uh, chrome work has all been uh, replated, uh, as you'd expect, on a complete uh, restoration. But you just can't help thinking that it looks uh, even better than it did when it was new uh, more than 40 years ago. And you can also see that even in 1972 with this first Alan Clues creation, he already had the shape and the design of the bike's fuel tank uh, all worked out. And uh, this shape and the polished alloy look uh, would of course be used on many future CCM bikes in the following years. But as far as I'm aware, uh, when Ian stripped this bike down prior to its restoration, every nut, bolt, screw and even washer it was kept and then uh, replated or refurbished so that it could be reused uh, when he put the bike uh, back together. So again, uh, those parts all add uh, to the authenticity of this uh, superb uh, stroker specimen. So it's not uh, exactly clear as uh, to the final production run of these Clues strokers and it seems that the more uh, knowledgeable people that you ask, uh, the numbers tend to vary uh, considerably. But uh, one thing's for sure, uh, very few of these strokers were made in 1972 because Alan uh, began work on his first uh, real uh, Clues competition machine the year after. Uh, which was in 1973. But quite a lot of these uh, early uh, models that Alan uh, created in those uh, early years never uh, had any Kickstarters, which uh, was uh, said uh, just to save weight. But uh, Alan's thinking uh, was that uh, if he stopped uh, one of these big four-strokers in mid-race, then uh, by the time he got it fired up again, uh, your race uh, was already lost. Uh, besides, it was a bit of an art form anyhow getting these big BSA motors all fired up for the first time and there was certainly uh, a knack to doing it right and it was thought that your average uh, club rider would maybe struggle uh, with that uh, kind of procedure which is why uh, you often saw uh, these big four-strokers uh, parked up at the top of a hill uh, prior to a race commencing. 
but it was usually just a case of uh, flooding uh, the carburetor and then uh, maybe a few uh, rocks back and forward with the bike in a high gear just to draw the fuel into the cylinder and then uh, a quick uh, spurt of speed before uh, jumping onto the bike seat and simultaneously uh, letting uh, the clutch out at the same time and uh, that was usually enough to get your uh, stroker or uh, CCM uh, blasting uh, down the track. So uh, there you have it, uh, a super uh, rear bike in uh, fantastic condition after its recent uh, restoration and uh, a little bit of uh, motorcycle uh, nostalgia as well uh, with a bike uh, that paved the way for many of those uh, fantastic race bikes that Alan Clues and the CCM factory produced for us uh, during those golden days of the 1970s and uh, 1980s. And I can only imagine uh, what the price tag of this uh, original example would be if it ever came up uh, for sale. But uh, if I know Ian Ridley, then that's never uh, going to happen. Okay, so uh, coming up next here on Classic Dirt Bike TV, we're going to uh, check out another British classic from the late 1960s and we'll be taking a much uh, closer look at this lovely 1969 uh, Greaves Griffin 380, uh, which is another one of those uh, long lost uh, vintage racers that you very rarely see at classic events in this uh, modern day. So make sure that you retune to take a look at this bike. But for the time being, thanks for watching and uh, once more, it's goodbye for now.